All right, calling this meeting to order at 7 p.m. Good evening, everyone. Um, I ask you all to rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Welcome everybody to our May meeting. To get started, I just wanted to name that our chair um, won't be present today, so I'll be leading our meeting, um, but super excited to with the um, agenda items that we have today. So um, to begin, do I have a motion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting on April 13th? I make a motion to accept the minutes of the regular meeting on April 13th. Do I have a second? Second. All right, the motion passes. Next up, we have public comment. I ask any, oh, and before I begin too, if anybody does need um, translations, we do have headphones in the front. Si alguien necesita interpretación, um, te, también tenemos audífono. And so with that said, we'll go ahead and get public comment started. You have up to four minutes to speak, and I ask folks to state their name and their address too. And if you can use the mic in the middle, please. Okay. Thank you. Um, my name is Mayra Valderas, and um, I grew up in Chelsea since um, 18, 1988. Uh, I own my house in 59 Addison uh, in Chelsea. And um, the reason for me to come over here, uh, this is my second time I come in front of you guys. Um, I was the person who did the testimony of my son that he has ADHD combined. Um, before we, like four years ago, when we were starting fighting for the money to the state so they can give money to Chelsea. Um, the reason I come in here is because um, since my son is star preschool, uh, he, he has uh, this situation, but he never get evaluated. So he went to preschool, kinder, first grade, until second grade. And for me, he has been very disappointed because after they have been diagnosed him in 2016, uh, they give him the plan 405 or 504. So I have to be behind every single time with teachers and the school so they can implement it what he needs. And um, no, now it's been through since he's here, now he's in high school and it happens the same thing. They just implemented just almost in the end of the year. And for me, that's very, very disappointed. And that's why I'm here to let you know, because last time I told the same thing when I came and spoke about this issue, that there are people who has IPs, who has four or five, if parents are not on top, they're not implemented to the kids. And I am experienced this and Nobody telling me I have been experiences. My son has been in pre, in, in pre kinder. So for me, I have a meeting already with uh, assistant. Um, I forgot her name. I'm sorry, but uh, with uh, in here in the in the city hall because I was very disappointed, and I told them I wanted to make a difference in Chelsea schools, and I have a lot of knowledge because I was teacher for 11 years, and I know they have been a lot of because we don't have budgets or because we don't have enough staff. But for me to notice and to see what's going on with 30 kids in the class of my son, now he's in ninth grade in high school. And for him to go to the first grade and not having the help that he needs, for me, it's been very challenging because he doesn't want to go to school. He doesn't, um, just missing a lot of work. And especially because last um, January, uh, they find out that I have cancer. So thank God they pull everything away and it's clear, but then I went through um, radiation. And for me, it's like very upset because he needed the help and nobody was giving it to him. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm coming here in front of you guys to change and make a change and support the schools because they need a lot of support. I don't know who in charge of 
supervising the plans to be uh, implemented, I don't know. But I think we need to make a change. And I think we need to be more because by law, we're supposed to be implementing these things. It's not a choice. And if we cannot do that, we have to find a way to do it. And I'm here to let you know that uh, the principal from Chelsea High School, he told me, you know what? We need more people like you. But we need association with parents and teachers that they can come and bring the voices. Because for a teacher to have 30 students in a classroom and with kids that they have special needs, they're not gonna make their job. They're not gonna implement the help for those children who need it. So we need to make a difference. We need to change that. And how are we gonna change it? To bring with ideas, to do actions, to, to do something. Because if we don't do something, this is gonna happen. Imagine me from since preschool, preschool until ninth grade, dealing with the same thing. If I'm not on top of the people, nobody do nothing. It took almost the end of this year so they can implement my son four or five. And I feel that's very chain. And we need to really focus on what's going on. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you again for your vulnerability um, and your advocacy. We recognize the work that our parents do to continue to show up for our students. And so I wanna thank you again uh, for speaking today. Any other public comment? Going once, going twice. All right, so we'll tr uh, transition to presentations, starting with our strategic plan update from Central Office. Great. So um, it gives me pleasure to introduce Andre. <laughs> well, should, it, it was supposed to be Andre and Ashley, and they are our um, Harvard residents this year and semester. And unfortunately, Ashley could not be with us because she is ill, but Andre is well prepared and we'll do this solo. Um, so this is their culminating project for um, the year. And we have been working, as you know, on our strategic plan. We are completing year two of our strategic plan. And so we're providing an update of the last two years. And so I'm excited to have Andre share and um, and just this is your last day with us. So before you end, I wanna say thank you. Um, you've been amazing to, to have your, you have such a humble spirit and um, we will, we wish you all the best. And I know that you'll still be just in Cambridge, just for two more years, so I'm sure we will continue to see you, but I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate that, Dr. Vita, and thank you to the school committee and to the citizens of uh, Chelsea and to the uh, people who work in Chelsea Public Schools. It's truly been an honor to uh, serve and work here for the last uh, few months uh, over the course of this semester, and I'm deeply appreciative of the opportunity to have worked on a project with my um, uh, my colleague, Ashley Porto Dominguez, who are, who's not here today, like you mentioned, and I think she might be watching on Facebook. Uh, so we'll say hi to Ashley, uh, and hopefully she's there. Um, so I just wanna go ahead and start off by saying uh, good afternoon, good evening, um, and setting a little bit of context. So in 2021, Chelsea Public Schools released its five-year strategic plan, and we're honored to be here today to review some of the amazing work that has already be, been done uh, in support of this five-year vision. And this is a, a new picture for the, for the updated booklet when it gets printed. So the CPS priorities are grounded in the idea that every student will graduate from high school on a path to college and career success. No matter what students may choose as their path after leaving CPS, we wanna ensure that they have every option available to them. To accomplish this, there, are there have been five priorities, each with its own indicators and key actions, which we'll touch on in more depth momentarily. I wanna draw, uh, draw our attention to the values that serve as the f foundation for this framework uh, and all of the work that we've accomplished and will continue to do moving forward. And that's equity, instruction, safety, relationships, support, and respect and integrity. 
So priority one was all about rigorous and culturally relevant instruction. Uh, and the key actions in priority one, they're not listed out here, but I'll, I'll voice over them. Uh, the first one was supporting all teachers and leaders to develop a deep understanding of uh, standards and how to use them uh, to transform student engagement and performance. The second one uh, here is interventions, um, and that's all about strengthening our tier two instruction, literacy, and math interventions through high quality uh, interventions and ongoing progress monitoring. The third one is all about curriculum, empowering and partnering with educators to review curriculum for cultural and linguistic bias to ensure that uh, it is culturally and linguistically relevant and responsive to ensure that all of our students see themselves in the curriculum being taught. And the last one was centering around data and the use of data to evaluate and continuously improve the effectiveness of instructional practices to support and accelerate learning. And so now we'll look at the accomplishments of Chelsea Public Schools as it relates to priority one. And these are just a, a, a few of the many accomplishments that have happened across schools and across the district over the course of the last few years. Uh, they include instructional rounds, uh, prioritizing and, and creating professional learning teams, PLTs, uh, the establishment of the use of iReady with data-driven instruction, uh, the uh, use and creation of high-quality instructional materials in, throughout classrooms, uh, the uh, implementation of a district-wide equity audit, um, and then also the establishment of acceleration academies, uh, specifically for secondary schools. Priority two was all about increasing access to engaging and enriching opportunities uh, for all students. Here are the six different key actions that were included in priority two. Uh, the idea of strengthening and the dual language programs and the world language courses to honor students' own cultures, others' cultures, and build connections in our global community. The second one, expanding the early college options uh, and high-level STEM courses that, student, that keep students engaged in their learning uh, while providing a real-world career-oriented curriculum. The third one, digital literacy, continuing to build upon the digital literacy and coding uh, to create and ensure that we have digitally literate graduates. The fourth one is expanding opportunities for experiential learning out of the school that builds on, that builds on uh, the, and reinforces the classroom learning that students are having, especially in the middle grades. Uh, the third one, excuse me, the fifth one, excuse me, is about expanding internships and community service learning opportunities at the high school level. And then lastly, uh, partnering with community organizations to increase robust after-school programming, particularly in STEM, the arts, debate, uh, and again, especially in the middle grades. And again, just like the priority one, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the accomplishments uh, that Chelsea Public Schools has made over the course of the last few years. So the first one is uh, the creation of the assistant mu uh, multilingual education director to support the dual language programming huge accomplishment. Uh, another one has been the implemented uh, assessment to support uh, multilingual learners in earning their seal of biliteracy upon graduation. The third one, as mentioned previously, expanded early college options uh, to include the Ben Franklin Institute of Technology, BFIT. The fourth one, uh, expanding after school programming through activities like uh, coding courses via Codelicious, Girls Who Do Science for the Elementary Schools, and then the uh, Children's Choir. Additionally, we've implemented before and after school tutoring, introduced uh, STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematic extended uh, learning opportunities, which include the calculus project at the high school. And lastly, but certainly not, not least, the developed experiential learning opportunities for Chelsea High School students in collaboration with the city of Chelsea. Priority four, three was all about recruiting, supporting, and retaining a diverse and high quality teachers and leaders throughout the district. And this one had five key actions in the strategic plan. The first one was about investing in and supporting teacher leadership opportunities. Following that was all about mentoring and coaching and supporting new assistant principals and principals as they strengthen their capacity to build school climate and culture that welcomes diversity. Thirdly, uh, providing individualized support and guidance to administrators to further develop their leadership skills. 
Fourth, expanding pipelines for professional, paraprofessionals, teachers, and principals, so this idea of multiple pathways for folks to get involved and, and be able to continue to uh, move up in, in ways that they see fit. And then lastly, providing high quality professional development on teaching to the standards and culturally relevant pedagogy. Let's see uh, some of the accomplishments over the last couple of years. So the first one, uh, partnered with DESI, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, to implement a diversification program at Chelsea. As mentioned in one of the key actions around pipelines, uh, there's been an implementation of several different pipelines uh, over the course of the last few years, which include the high school student to paraprofessional pipeline, the parent to paraprofessional pipeline, the paraprofessional to teacher pipeline, uh, provisionally licensed teacher pathways, as well as the teacher to admin uh, pipeline. Um, and that's just amazing to see what's been done in the last few years to create robust pipelines for, for different entry points across different roles throughout the district. Thirdly, uh, there was the establishment of a mentoring program uh, with leads in each building for, for new teachers, principal coaching and assist with assistant principals and the super, uh, excuse me, with assistant superintendents, uh, deputy superintendents and the superintendent herself, uh, leadership academy for teachers and leaders, and lastly, uh, and certainly not least, is creating affinity groups and spaces for uh, black, indigenous, per, uh, people of color, teachers of color, to promote inclusion and belonging throughout the district. And we see this uh, wonderful picture of one of the gatherings that occurred uh, this year, uh, one of the first gatherings uh, to occur that highlighted um, uh, teachers of color throughout the district. The fourth priority was all about engaging parents uh, and community members, community organizations, in shared decision making. Uh, and this one had really three major key actions. The first one was to engage families and educators in the co-design process for initiatives, to shift power dynamics, increase cultural competence, and ensure mutual respect and authentic family engagement. The second one was all about increasing partnerships with uh, community-based organizations to integrate and improve health and social service uh, supports for students and families. And lastly, the third key action in the strategic plan was all about diversifying communication strategies to, in order to reach, inform, and engage more members of the community. And here are all the amazing accomplishments for Priority 4. We expanded the uh, Family Liaison Program to match student enrollment at each campus. We built relationships with families through the implementation of the Trust Visits Program at the beginning of each school year. There was the establishment and the creation of the amazing children's cabinet. Uh, on top of that, there was established relationships for telehealth partnerships with Cartwheel Care and Gaggle, uh, as well as uh, additional uh, mental health supports through the city uh, ARPA, ARPA uh, fund, uh, that also established more community-based organization partnerships. Um, there was also an, a relationship built with established local media, including Telemundo, Chelsea Record, WP, I mean WBUR. Text, uh, communicating through text, adding texting as a mode of communication was a huge win over the course of the last few years in engaging our parents. And then lastly, increasing uh, presence on social media through uh, Twitter and Facebook. Hello to everyone out there on Facebook watching this tonight. And lastly, uh, priority five was all about ensuring efficient and effective systems and operations and technology. We know, you know now more than ever, there has to be uh, effective systems for technology in, in this age. So the first key action was all about improving the uh, efficiency and the bit uh, of the business operational and human resource processes through automation as appropriate. Next was engaging families and community partners in the budgeting process, and I have to say this was one of my favorite things that I got to see over my course of my time in Chelsea. I got to hop on several different budget conversations via Zoom with different stakeholders, and it was just beautiful to, to be in that space and see folks um, asking questions and uh, offering uh, suggestions. Thirdly, uh, the third key action was all about improving the daily functioning of the website, which is super important to communicate up-to-date information for families and communities. And lastly, uh, it was to invest in more technology and techno technological support in schools through one-to-one -one learning, uh, and even in person. And here are uh, some of the amazing accomplishments as it relate relates to Priority 5. So the first one is uh, we ensured that all students had access to Chromebooks. This is a huge win, particularly knowing that this came in the pandemic. 
uh, and one-to-one -one technology was, became very vital to supporting students' learning. Uh, the second one was an upgrade to uh, Munis software, uh, which also helped increase budget uh, community conversations. Thirdly, there was a creation of a new district website, uh, and there's also uh, ongoing plans for monitored engagement on that website. Also, one of my favorite things that I got to do, I guess my first day here at Chelsea, uh, at the Webster Avenue building with the school committee at a retreat, uh, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful, amazing building uh, and a testament to all of the hard work that's gone on in the few, last few years to create new spaces for Chelsea Public Schools. Fifth, uh, piloted new substitute uh, management program. And then lastly, uh, we installed new copiers uh, across the district, district-wide. As a former teacher and uh, assistant principal and principal, I can tell you that new copiers are always uh, a hit uh, and beautiful to have. Um, and with that, I, I wanna say thank you again to Dr. Abeta, to the cabinet, um, to the school committee, to all those uh, members of the Chelsea Public Schools co uh, community that welcomed me and welcomed Ashley, uh, and I'll uh, pause for questions. Amazing, thank you so much for your presentation. I just wanna pause to see if there are any questions from our members. Nope. Well, it's stop. more comments. First of all, um, it's so short time here with us. I wish you were staying longer, but I'm pretty sure there could be a position here in the future <laughs> for you. <laughs> uh, people that come to Chelsea just love Chelsea. So um, I can see thank why. you for your work. And I just wanna say as a, parent of former parent of Chelsea Public Schools um, the school district has come a long way um, there's still work to be done but when my boys were in elementary through middle school um, family liaisons did not exist and this is why I'm sitting here 12 years because there wasn't somebody there to support us and as I used to walk into the Kelly school and I would see parents confused they didn't know what to do I was like oh, wait a minute let's go I'll ask um, and like I said, this is why I'm here, but I'm just so um, happy to see that we have more family liaisons to really to try to engage the parents. I'm super excited about the extension of the dual language. My boys were in the Caminos program, and unfortunately, it only went up to fourth grade then. And we lost a lot of amazing students because the program was ending in fourth grade and parents um, that's when we, they would go to the charter schools. So I appreciate that this has been a priority and that over at the Kelly School, Ms. Langweaver, that you're keeping the program going strong. Um, I'm a little biased, Kelly School is the best school, but. <laughs> um, and I also wanna say that Pathways Program, um, what an amazing opportunity for our paras, for our parents, for our teachers. You know, we needed to create something to try to retain our teachers here, and having those pathways for them is amazing. Um, it, coming back after pandemic, I get it. it. It's overwhelming. The classrooms are overwhelming. I work at another school district, so I know. And I just wanna say that we appreciate all the work that you do every day coming in to work with our students. I wanna thank Almi for thinking of these things, working with us to bring these priorities and really sticking to them and working towards them. So um, I'm pleased and that's all I have to say. And I wish you all the very best. Thank you, Thank you so much, Ms. Velez. Any other comments or questions? Yes, yes Ms. Alfaro. Just to piggyback on what you said, Almi has a 94.5 announcement that we're hiring. So please, I encourage you, like she's encouraging to apply. This was the interview. No, <laughs> right? Great presentation, thank you. And I don't know why the good things always have to leave. We need to hire him. I think I'm gonna file a motion so we can hire him. <laughs> and Ashley, Ashley, Ashley was much instrumental in this and has been there the whole year yeah. compared to my six months, four months. And you're done with your program. You and Ashley can come and present anytime. I, I appreciate your enthusiasm and um, I love the presentation. So thank you guys so much. Ashley's here in spirit, so um, by all means. Um, and it makes me very happy that, as you said, in such a short time, because that's 
the biggest aspect of it. I'm so glad that in such a short time, you can come up here and give such a presentation with the level of enthusiasm that you were able to present. Because um, I'm, not, I'm notorious for being sidetracked, but you were able to embody the essence of our school systems and our districts. And I am happy that someone that is not necessarily one of our staff members can come in and see that. Um, so um, I appreciate that you were able to highlight all of these features, um, pinpoint you know, the, the district's mission, uh, where we've gone, where we came from, and where we're going, the direction. Um, I'm curious to see if you can be a little, throw a little monkey wrench in there and just say if you were to, if you could um, just go ahead and isolate anything that you would potentially like to see change uh, as a perspective or if you see any room for growth, like what could you say, hey, there's room for improvement here and I see you guys um, getting there because it is part of the plan and this is how you guys have already um, are addressing that um, and you know that's that's me um, or something that you would have liked to have added to the um, presentation that didn't make it but yeah it's a great question I uh, yeah I I think that I think one of the things I've learned is, well, one, I want to start by saying, I think it was, I really appreciate the, the comment around the enthusiasm and our ability to, you know, pull out all of the amazing thing that's being done. I, I think that is 100% a testament to the work that um, Dr. Abeta has done as superintendent and that the cabinet has done. Um, it, it made it really easy. And in some, as somebody who was a former high school principal myself, I've written many strategic plans. I never really thought about the idea of like, providing uh, strategic updates to the community, which is like, when you hear it, you're like, oh, duh. But like, a, a lot of people don't do that with strategic plans. They just collect dust and sit on shelves. So I think this, first of all, was an amazing idea from, from Dr. Abita and the cabinet to do this. You know, I think um, it's hard to say the, the answer to your question only because I haven't been here long and I would hate to mischaracterize the hard work that's been done with any, you know, preliminary ideas that I have on what needs to, to be a, an area of improvement. I think if I had spent here like the whole year or you know multiple years during my program, I might be able to give a better answer to that. But um, I imagine that all of the things that you know still are areas of growth are gonna be things that become pri like mini priorities or strategic initiatives in the next you know school year or the next few school years and will end up being on here as uh, updates um, of accomplishments. I have no no doubt in my mind that they're going to become accomplishments. Any gaps that exist, um, but that's that's kind of what I was what I was thinking about. That's a great question. Thank you so much, Ms. Covas Caraballo. Any other questions? Lingering questions. Awesome. Well, all my school committee members really echoed what I wanted to say and the questions that I had. But I just want to thank you again for your update. Um, and your candidness um, in, uh, and commitment to our uh, community as well. So thank you so much. Appreciate you. Great. Thank and you. before you leave, Andre, I do have a little gift for you and Ashley if you want to take it. Okay. Um, I just want to say thank you oh, on behalf you. of Chelsea Public Schools and wish you all the best. So I have a little something for you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Amazing. Now we'll transition siguiente al, uh, to the report from the superintendent. So I'll turn it over to you, Dr. Abeda. Great. Thank you. So um, I get the pleasure of recognizing several groups tonight. Um, I say groups, but I wanted to start off actually with one of our school committee member, um, Jeanette Velez, I just wanted to congratulate you on your recent college graduation. And you, you inspire all of us, and thank you for being a role model to our families and our students, and we love you. Thank you. And 
the next group that I'm real excited about is to recognize our principals. And you know, every year we have Principal Appreciation Day, and I just don't think our principals get enough recognition because they work so hard. And I know how hard it is to be a principal. I've been in your shoes, and I just remember feeling the weight of the world on my shoulders all the time. And I always see that because it is, you are the leader of your building. You have, some of you have up to a, a thousand, Obed, you have a thousand seven hundred kids at your school. Elementaries have up to 500, and middles up to 500 too at some of our, at one of our middle schools almost. But I know how hard this work is. And the research shows us that the principal is the key, second key linchpin to improving instruction in a school building, second. And the first is the actual teacher in the classroom. So the responsibility that our principals have to improve instruction is huge. I mean, we, we sit here and, you know, like we make policy and we try to make your lives easier and we're here to serve you so that way you can do the work that you're called to do in your building every single day. And I know how hard of a job this is and I just wanted to publicly say thank you because I know that you guys come, you show up every day, you're dealing with so much on your plates and it's a lot. And we just wanted to publicly say thank you. So I will first call up, let's see, Ron Schmidt. So come on up. <laughs> okay. um, and you can just stay right there so we can get a picture. And then, oh, yeah, stay here. Obed Morales, he's our Chelsea High School. Chelsea High School principal, and then Ron Smith is our Chelsea Opportunity Academy principal. And then Meg Mancini, Chelsea Virtual Learning Academy. <laughs> Adam Wildye, he is at our Brown Middle School. Uh, Michael Talbot, who's not here tonight, but he is at the um, uh, Clark's Siegel Middle School and Michelle Martinello she is unable to make it and she is at the Eugene Wright Middle School and we have Trelane Clark who is principal of the Hooks Elementary <laughs> Nate Myers principal of the Sokolowski everybody's a shark <laughs> And then Lisa Lineweaver, principal of the Kelly School. And Blanca Restrepo, who's the principal of Berkowitz Elementary. And Jackie Bevere, and she's unable to make it. She's a long time principal of the Early Learning Center. So it's thank you to our principals who do a fabulous day, day in and day out. And um, if you have gray hair, I know you've earned every one of them. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know, do you, school committee, why don't we get a picture with the principals and then we'll get one with all of us, yeah.
continue with my report. Yes. <laughs> all right, folks, as we get situated, we're just going to make sure all the tech's working here. Great. Okay, so another piece of my, another um, part of my report is I do want to introduce everyone to a new member of our cabinet team. Um, she's our chief academic officer, Dr. Onita Fox Roy. So she is here tonight. Uh, we're so excited to have you with us, Dr. Fox Roy. And um, you, I sent ev everyone her bio, but she comes to us with a wealth of knowledge. Over 20 years in the Boston Public Schools, working in the curriculum instruction department, and then most recently from Dedham as the equity officer. So we're just blessed to have her, and welcome to Chelsea. And then um, I will now have uh, Deputy Superintendent, Mr. Adam DeLady, do our um, updates with our success indicators. Okay. Uh, so the first thing I'll share um, is our district-wide daily attendance. Um, for the month of April, the, the good news is that Every single grade, with the exception of 10 and 11, improved their attendance rate from March to April. Um, and grade 10 and 11 didn't drop that much. They went from 82 to 80 and 80.9 to 76.1. So still in the ballpark, every other grade did increase. Um, and as far as the year-to-date totals, um, remember we are dealing with the triple-demic this year. Um, however, um, Every grade between five and 12, so all of our middle school and high school grades are on pace to improve their attendance rate as compared to the total for last year. So unless some unanticipated skipping happens for the last quarter, and oh, Mr. Morales says no, um, so we should be in good shape for all of those grades to improve their attendance um, over last year, and we're really happy about that. The dropout rate, um, we are seeing some improvements. Again, we're not where we, we want this number to be at zero. Um, however, last year's rate was 6.06%. Um, um, and I learned from talking to our data analyst that um, I, I was misunderstanding that data all, all along. So that's 6.06%. That's at this point this year, not the total. Uh, at this point last year, not the total for last year. Um, and I didn't understand that. Um, but now I do. So. Um, at this point last year, we were at 6.06%. At this point this year, we're at 5.22%. So we're about 80% uh, 80 of a point below uh, where we were last year. So that's also good. Um, also, when you break it down uh, through um, our L's and our non-L's, um, our non-L's last year at this point were at a 3.99% dropout rate. This year, they're at a 2.75% dropout rate. So about a point and a quarter below where we were last year. Um, and our L students last year at this point, they were at a 16% dropout rate, and this year they're at a 10%. While that 10 is way higher than we want it to be, it's still six points lower than it was last year. So um, something to sort of celebrate there. As far as our in and out data, um, this definitely varies each month. Um, at our ELC, we had four, four new students come in and three students leave. At the elementary, we had 11 in and four out. At the middle schools, we have had five in and nine out. At the high school, we've had 11 in and 18 out for a total of 31 in and 34 <coughs> out. Um, and for the year, we have uh, 664 students coming in and 392 students going out, which Excuse me, which is a difference of 272 students that we have now that we didn't have in the in September 1st. Um, and in thinking about what that does for our funding, um, remember they take a snapshot at Oct October 1st. So those September increases <coughs> didn't really impact that. Our, our October 1st data, we actually have about 130 more students now than we did on October 1st. Um, so that still hurts a little bit, but um, it's still good to have people coming in. And lastly, 
the failing grades. Um, we're holding steady where we were the last time we did this at the end of quarter two. Um, I know. I know we weren't happy to hear this data, and, and you know, we're still not, but um, we're right around the same ballpark. Our grade nine students, we have, um, we have a total of 531 students, and of those, 115 have at least one failing grade. Um, 67 have two, 54 have three, and 15 students have four or more failing grades in ninth grade, um, and that gives us a percentage of about 47.3 students. Um, and that is, uh, part of that has to do with uh, the, the move towards increasing rigor, and I think I said this last month, as we increase rigor, now we have to ensure that we increase the supports to go along with that rigor. And we're working on that. Mr. Morales is doing a phenomenal job, um, but there's still a lot of work to do. Um, and our 10th grade, similar numbers, we have 448 10th graders, 65 of those are failing one grade. 49 are failing two, 35 are failing three, and 22 are failing four for a rate of 38.2%. And that concludes the indicators of success, and I'll take any questions. Any questions? I do have one clarification point. Can you um, explain what the total percentage means? Is it... Uh, at does it con include the number of students that are failing just one um, minimum? Yeah, so um, to use the example, for ninth graders, it's 47.3%. So that means 47.3% of ninth graders are failing at least one course. Got it. Okay. Thank you. And then I had one more question regarding page two for indicator 10, do we have a disaggregated data for students with IEPs? Um, not here, but we can certainly get that. Yeah, I think that would be great, thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Awesome, thank you so much, I appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, next up, uh, we don't have a update from our student representative, um, so we'll go to the personnel update okay. next. Thank you. All right. So for personnel updates, we are still hiring. As you can see, we've hired uh, mostly paraprofessionals, um, and the demographic data, because uh, we are working to increase our diversity in, um, bless you. in our bless you in our workforce, and so. Uh, we've hired for this to date this this month. We've hired 43% Caucasian, 43% Hispanic, and 14% Black. And then, if you go to our enrollment report, we are at 6,288 students. And actually, this is our um, largest enrollment that we've had since the pandemic. So we've bounced back up and actually almost 100 students higher than the pandemic from 2019. And I'd like to commend these two reports for the record. All right, do I have a motion to commend the report to the record? I make a motion. Second. So have, thank you. All right, next up we have the enrollment, uh, well actually, yeah, we have the enrollment reports next. Oh, oh, whoops, my bad. Next up, we have the committee report. Oh, I'll make bad. a motion that we accept the subcommittee. Oh, minutes. thank you, Ms. Velez. Second. Do we make, do I have a motion to accept the notes from the subcommittee minutes? Second. Motion to accept the subcommittee minutes. And I have a second? Thank you, appreciate y'all. All right, next up. Um, we have a new business. So do we have um, consideration and action to hire Dr. Tamara Blake Canty as Assistant Superintendent of Chelsea Public Schools? Can I have a roll call, please? Mr. O'Regan? Yes. Ms. Zabit? Yes. Ms. Cabral? Yes. Ms. Covas Caraballo? Dr. Blake Canty, do you want to stay with us a little longer? <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> so yes. Mr. Jimenez? Yes. Ms. Velez? Yes. Ms. Alfaro? Absolutely yes. Ms. Hernandez? Yes. That's eight in the affirmative and one absent. Eight, eight in the affirmative, one absent. The motion carries. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Next up, we have consideration and action to accept 5,500, sorry, 5,400 from Boston College for the Youth Leadership Initiative YLI grant. Roll call, please. Mr. O'Regan? Yes. Ms. O'Regan? Yes. Ms. Zabit? Yes. Ms. Cabral? Yes. Ms. Covas Caraballo? Yes. Mr. Jimenez? Yes. Ms. Velez? Yes. Ms. Alfaro? Yes. Ms. Hernandez? Yes. That's eight in the affirmative and one absent. Eight in the affirmative, one absent. The motion carries. Next, consideration and action to accept a gift from the Porter Square Books Foundation of 180 copies of Borderless by Jennifer D. Leon with an estimated value of $3,600. Roll call, please. Mr. O'Regan? <coughs> Yes. Ms. Zabit? Yes. Ms. Cabral? Yes. Ms. Covas Caraballo? Yes. Mr. Jimenez? Yes. Ms. Velez? Yes. Ms. Alfaro? Yes. Ms. Hernandez? Yes. That's eight in the affirmative and one absent. Eight in the affirmative, one absent. The motion carries. Consideration and action to accept a gift from the Provision Ministry of 576 sweatshirts for students with an estimated value of approximately $17,275. Roll call, please. Mr. O'Regan? Mr. O'Regan? Yes. Ms. Zabit? Yes. Ms. Cabral? Yes. Ms. Covas Caraballo? Yes. Mr. Jimenez? Yes. Ms. Velez? Yes. Ms. Alfaro? Yes. Ms. Hernandez? Yes. That's eight in the affirmative and one absent. Eight in the affirmative, one absent, the motion carries. Consideration and action to amend the non-bargaining salary and wage schedules for 2022-2023 for salaried positions to establish and classify two positions of La Vida Scholars, AVID Program Manager and Intervention, intervention Specialist. Roll call, please. Mr. O'Regan. Yes. Ms. Zabit. Yes. Ms. Cabral? Yes. Ms. Covas Caraballo? Yes. Mr. Jimenez? Yes. Ms. Velez? Yes. Ms. Alfaro? Yes. Ms. Hernandez? Yes. Let's say in the affirmative and one absent. Eight in the affirmative, one absent. The motion carries. Consideration and action to accept the recommendation of the superintendent to approve a field trip to Kennedy Lake in New Hampshire for 45 Wright Science and Technology students and 12 chaperones on June 8, 2023. Roll call, please. Mr. O'Regan? Mr. O'Regan? Yes. Ms. Zabit? Yes. Ms. Cabral? Yes. Ms. Covas Caraballo? Um, give me one second, please. I just want to make sure that the paperwork that's printed up here and the permission slips um, just match up. Yes. Mr. Jimenez? Yes. Ms. Velez? Yes. Ms. Alfaro? Yes. Ms. Hernandez? Yes. That's eight in the affirmative and one absent. Eight in the affirmative, one absent. The motion carries. Enjoy Canopy Lake. Consideration and action to accept the recommendation of the superintendent to approve the field trip to New Balance Outdoor Track Nationals at UPenn, Pennsylvania for one student and two chaperones from June 15th to June 18th, 2023. Roll call, please. Mr. O'Regan? Mr. O'Regan? Yes. Ms. Zabit? Yes. Ms. Cabral? Yes. Ms. Covas Caraballo? Yes. Uh, Mr. Jimenez? Yes, and good luck. <laughs> Ms. Velez? Yes. Ms. Alfaro? Yes. And Ms. Hernandez? Yes. A state in the affirmative and one absent. 
Eight in the affirmative, one absent, the motion carries. Good luck. Next up, we have communication and announcements. Do we have any announcements from any members? I have one announcement. I just want to give a shout out to all of our educators and teachers. Next week is Teacher Appreciation Week. And so I just want to thank all of our educators for the work that you do in and out um, every day um, to support our students. Um, additionally, we do have the Mamma Mia um, musical tonight um, through Saturday. So if you haven't already gotten your ticket, make sure you um, get one at the door. Um, and it's going to be happening each evening at 7 p.m. as well. Uh, Ms. Covas Caraballo, if you have another announcement. The Mental Health, um, May 18th, right? Um, three to five at the uh, Williams School. So Mental Health Awareness, um, we had a lot of questions um, from fellow council members about um, what, and May is uh, Mental Health Awareness uh, Month, so we're gonna be doing that on May 18th. And um, I also want to highlight um, Teachers Appreciation Day I did take a walk through uh, with fellow um, council members um, as far as uh, um, actually principals of day. So um, it was very heartwarming to see how endearing the kids were when they saw the, the principals. Um, and the reason why I was so taken aback by your presentation was because when I said that it embodied um, the spirit of the collective was mm -hmm. because when I walked into the building um, myself as a parent, I, um, I was inspired because growing up in Chelsea, um, if you were a part of the bi bilingual program, when I was growing up, it had almost like a negative connotation. Like it, it meant that, you know, it, it, it wasn't, you couldn't speak English well enough and then you couldn't speak Spanish well enough. And ideally, you were, you, you should have been proficient in English. That's what your parents wanted you to do back then because you were taught to assimilate. Um, so, and we've had these conversations. And to see now that our students now are taught that bilingual is just amazing. And to embrace your culture and to learn to speak languages um, and to respect each, each other um, and just to have that love for, you know, your culture and, and why it's important and your roots and, and to have your teachers and the staff and the faculty work so hard and be able to randomly go from one classroom to the next um, and to have the principals know what teacher was doing what at what time at random because we were running behind so it wasn't like it was a robotic schedule um, and to see that they were still able to accommodate to us and to see the teachers just effortlessly working with their students within you know and, and just to see how comfortable the kids were um, within their element um, that was really it was something else and it was you know we did the complex we had to you know pivot with the rest of the schools but it's just um, at some point I encourage everyone else to be able to just as a uh, from a parent's perspective from a resident's perspective and educators you know something to do so I definitely want to highlight that and I also enrolled um, my son and in parent information center um, they did an amazing job pretty straightforward so highlight that, that as well so, so glad you. you enjoyed that visit. Yeah. Any other? Yeah. I just wanted to shout you out because you're an educator. And Thank you. I just want to let you know how proud I am of you. Ms. Cabral will sit over there as a student rep while I will sit here as the chair and look at her <laughs> now. So Thank you. I just want to say thank you for coming back to your community and giving back. Um, so for those Chelsea High students, perfect role model here. She came back, she's given back, and just thank you. Thank you so much for those kind words. I really appreciate it. Yeah, we'll, we appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. 
And then I do want to give uh, two last shout outs. One to my mom, te amo. And second of all, to all the mothers and caretakers, um, happy early Mother's Day. Thank you for all that you do to take care of our kiddos, to take care of our babies and our community. Um, and with that, any other, yeah, Mr. Jimenez? Just really quick, um, I just want to make sure that folks know, um, especially folks um, watching on TV, on the 18th of May, uh, two weeks from today, uh, will be the second annual Chelsea Research Festival. Um, point of privilege, it is my wife that has been putting it together with some of the amazing folks from across um, the city, including Mike uh, sitting next to me, so thank you so much for everything you're doing to, to help make, make that a reality. Um, there's a lot of research that is done about Chelsea. Um, we're really trying to make sure that the results of that research and what is learned that is then used by other folks actually makes it back to us so that we can really learn about what's happening, um, you know, what are people learning about our community so that we can then know more um, and kind of address the issues that are facing um, the people who are here. Um, so that is going to be May 18th and then uh, fifth period. If you are a high school student, you can go um, in early, but if you are a community member, it will be open at 5 p.m. So hopefully you'll be able to join us there. Uh, again, May 18th at 5 p.m. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Jimenez. Last thoughts? All right. Yes, a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. All right, motion adjourned.